We started covering face recognition and detection, and we started with this paper, Deep Face, which was about face recognition. It's a paper written by Facebook. They have their own internal data set. They pre-train a classifier. They come up with some representations that later on they are going to use to say, are these two images from the same person or are they from different people? By looking at the inner product between these two representations. We covered FaceNet, which is a paper by Google. They have much larger data and at the same time, much larger number of classes compared to 4,030 identities. The data covered by Google, it has 8 million identities. So using softmax as your last layer is probably not feasible, even given the amount of resources that Google has. So they have to come up with new ideas, and the idea is using a triplet loss. All you need to know is in your data set, are these two images from the same person or these two images from different people? You pick an anchor, which could be this person or the representation coming out of a neural network for this person, the representation of a positive case, which is an image of the same person, but under different lighting conditions or perhaps in another day, having a different haircut and clothing. That's the positive case. And the negative case is the image of somebody else. And the idea is to make the positive case close to the anchor and the negative case further away from the anchor. They need to be different. And this is called metric learning. So you're learning a metric. But there is some catch with triplet loss that you need to do hard example mining or actually semi-hard example mining. Then we said we don't have access to the data from Facebook or, or Google. Let's go ahead and collect our own data or the authors of this paper decided to collect their own data. Their data is being collected using automatic and manual techniques. But once the data is collected, you can uh, either do classifier, like what we were doing earlier here with the paper from Facebook, or you can do the triplet loss. The data set is much smaller than the other two but it's also much bigger than the data sets that are publicly available. And it has uh, many identities. It's not too big, it's not too small. This was about face recognition. Then we covered two papers on face detection. One of them was actually localizing and putting bounding boxes around faces, going from one stage to the next stage. This way you're gonna detect the faces. At the same time, once you detect the faces, you can use it to recognize it or you can use it to recognize the attributes. Does this person have a baby hair? Do they have no beard? Are they smiling or no? And these are important when you're moving towards general AI. You want your robots to understand your facial expressions. Not only you're talking to them, you're also communicating information with them using your facial expressions. And this is called multimodal learning. Not only you're talking to them, you're they need to pay attention to your gestures. And we're gonna cover multimodal learning next semester. Then uh, we covered another one about face detection and at the same time alignment, which is about finding these key points on the face. And we saw that the technology is what we covered earlier when it came to detection and alignment or pose estimation. And that's why I was emphasizing on pose estimation earlier in the semester. Because now we are really comfortable while going through this paper, we were really comfortable. Then we started worrying about our loss functions. And this is for the sake of coming up with features that are more discriminative. You are going to appreciate this paper more once I show you uh, the last two slides today, what you're actually trying to do. But this is really useful when you have an open set problem. You have two images that are not part of your data or their identities are not part of your training data. You want these features to be as discriminative as possible. And one way of doing it is combining a softmax loss and a centeredness loss or a center loss, which is similar to clustering. You can think of these Cs as the cent center of your clusters. And depending on how much strength you're gonna give to your Lambda, these features are gonna become more and more discriminative. 
and then you can gain some performance out of it. So when it comes to deep learning, writing a better loss function, coming up with better data sets, coming up with better architectures, coming up with better evaluation metrics are the contributions that you can make. This paper is coming up with a better loss function. Now let's move on to triplet loss. Uh, we are trying to defend triplet loss. There are some downsides to triplet loss. One of them is that it's going to take your algorithm a long time to converge. And that's why you need to do hard example mining, because if you keep showing the easy examples or examples that are more common in your data, then our algorithm is going to learn them, but its learning process is going to saturate until, it sh until you show it a hard example. So it has to wait in a random fashion to see a hard example to adjust its gradients or its parameters. So hard example mining is a necessary component and people didn't know how to do it prior to this paper, how to appropriately do hard example mining. This one is gonna give us that. It's gonna give us an appropriate way of doing hard example mining. What is our problem? We are trying to do metric learning. What is the task? You have the space of images or space of text or a space of speech, and then you are mapping that to a low dimensional space, RD, and then you want to somehow define a metric. You want to find your metric. If two images are similar to each other, they need to be close in the manifold space, on the d-dimensional space, on the lower dimensional space. Otherwise, they should be further away from each other. And then on top of d, you're going to put a metric function that you know. For instance, you can put Euclidean distance. The Euclidean distance part, you know. You know its formula. If you have two vectors, you're going to subtract them, and then you're going to square them, sum up the entries, take a square root of that, and that's going to give you your Euclidean distance. You know its formula. What you don't know are the parameters of this neural network, and that's why it's called metric learning. You take two images, image i, image j, you push them through your neural network, that's going to give you two d-dimensional vectors that you can compute their Euclidean distance. So it's going to give you a single number to compare these images together. If your thetas are random, then this distance doesn't really make any sense. So it needs training. The question is how are we going to train this? We train this using a triplet loss. And how does that work? You have an anchor. So you have an anchor image. You push it through your neural network. You're going to get its corresponding representation. You take a positive case, the image or an image of this of the same person photographed under different conditions, maybe under different lighting conditions or different clothing or haircut, but it's the same person. So their representations, their distance should be small. At the same time, you show it some negative examples. These are examples of other people in your data set, images of other people, of not the same person. Then that's going to give you a triplet loss. We went through this with a margin. This plus is just the maximum of this number and zero. So whenever uh, the distance between a positive case and an anchor is bigger than the distance between uh, an anchor and a negative case, our loss is going to be unhappy and it's going to start penalizing. And this has to be true up, to, up until the margin. So that's a quick summary of triplet loss. And what you're learning are these parameters of your metric, of your neural network. And sometimes these are called Siamese networks. And the reason is you're taking two images using the same network architectures to process both of them. But then we saw that mining hard triplets is going to end up being crucial. If you don't do hard example mining, your algorithm is going to end up being super slow to converge. The other problem with triplet loss is that to generate your data set, the size of your data set is going to explode. There are many triplets that you can extract out of a single data set. The other catch is if you only show an algorithm, only hard examples or super hard examples, it's going to focus on the outliers in your data. And we know that any data, regardless of how clean it is, in practice, is going to have outliers. And your algorithm is going to focus on them. And at some point, it's going to give up because there is a lot of discrepancy between its decisions. You are penalizing it too much. And then it's going to collapse. So people are going to do 
soft versions of hard example mining or moderately hard or moderately uh, hard negatives and hard positives. And so far, so good. This was a quick recap of the trip that loss. What is the idea here? You don't want to be looking for your positive cases in your entire data. You pick an anchor and then you go hunting for a positive case in the images of the same person across your entire data because that could end up being costly. There could be millions of images for a single person or even thousands of images for a single identity. And this one is a typo. This should be XN. This is negative. The same scenario, if you want to look for a negative example among your entire data and look for the hardest, then you need to go ahead and look for it in, a, in your entire data set, which could be huge, which could be in the order of millions. And you do that only to compute one of your triplets. So it's not feasible. How about, the idea is how about looking for the positive cases and negative cases within a batch. You pick a batch of data and go ahead and look for hard and uh, negative and positive examples within that batch. Don't worry about this loss yet. It looks complicated mathematically, but the idea behind it is simple. So don't panic. You pick a batch or your mini batch. It's a sub sample of your data. Let's uh, look at an image and let's try to interpret these indices. The superscript is gonna count the identity. So person one, person two, person three, and person 1000. J is gonna count images of that person. Pick person one, and then uh, image one of, the, of person one, image two of person one, etc. So the superscript is the identity, J is the actual image, or the index of the actual image. How do you create your mini batch? You're gonna create it in a smart way. What do you do? You first, select p identities at random. You first select p people or p persons. And then you're gonna pick a person. For that person, you're gonna include k images of that person in your mini batch. Pick the second person in your mini batch, collect uh, k images out of them at random. And this is how you're gonna construct your batch. And therefore you're gonna end up with a batch size of p times k. For each person, you picked k images, you have P people in your batch, therefore that's gonna be your batch size, P times K. And it's gonna be balanced. The number of images of every single person in your batch is gonna end up being balanced. You have the same number of images for each person. So far, so good. What is the idea of this formula? You have an anchor in your batch. So you pick an image in your batch. You're gonna select the hardest positive and the hardest negative within this batch. First of all, because you choose your hardest positive and hardest negatives within a batch, it's not your entire data, you're sort of doing, you're finding the moderate or moderately hard negatives and moderately hard positives. These are not the hardest across your data. So you're achieving this second objective. At the same time, within the batch, you're doing hard example mining. Let's see how. You pick a person, so this first summation is counting the person identity. The second summation is counting the image. And these together is going to give you one anchor. It's going to give you one sample. And that's going to be the image of person I. And this is the eighth image of that person. You go ahead and look at your distance. This is your distance formula. Given these parameters, find the hardest positive. So you're maximizing this distance given these parameters. You're trying to find the hardest image of person I. So this is person I. And then you're finding the hardest image of that person within this batch. So P is counting from one up until K. This is the number of images each person has. This is the hardest positive. The hardest negative, you are looking for images of people who are different from the, the person that you chose, your anchor. So these are all of the images in your mini batch of different people, and then you are counting all of them. And then you want to find the closest to the anchor. This is the hardest negative. Given the, these parameters, you find your examples. Once you found them, you're gonna optimize this with respect to theta. So it's gonna be a two-step process. I'm gonna stop here and see if there are any questions. Was everything clear up until this point? Okay, perfect.
let's move on. This is the loss function that they're gonna use, but they're gonna experiment with other loss functions as well. What if you replace this hard maximum operation, which might end up being discrete and is actually discrete. What if you replace that with a softer version? Is your algorithm gonna converge better, yes or no? So everything is the same, except for where you have this maximum and you can replace maximum with a soft maximum. And what is the formula for it? The log of the summation of exponential is gonna give you a soft version of the maximum operation. Why is that? Because the exponential is gonna exaggerate these numbers. Once it, it exaggerates those numbers, the summation of a bunch of numbers, some of which being much larger than the others, is gonna get dominated by, by that number, which is the largest. And once you take the log, you're picking out that number, which was the largest in a soft fashion. So first you exaggerate your numbers, you add them up, the ones that are smaller compared to this exponential term are gonna end up being tiny. And once you take the log, you're focusing on the largest element here. So that's an intuition for why log of a summation of exponential is gonna approximately in a smooth fashion uh, be similar to the maximum function. Other than that, it's the same. You are doing the same thing. Log of the summation of exponential. The other change is you are taking M and putting it within your exponential. So it's not gonna be outside of your logs and maximum operations, it's gonna be inside here. And this is a soft version of this loss function, smoother approximation, but it, in the end, once you go through the experiments, you're gonna end up with the conclusion that this batch hard loss is actually better than this one. So you don't need to come up with a soft version of it, okay? Now let's use this batch hard loss on a data set that you can explore, it's market uh, 1501. This is not about face or face recognition, face detection anymore. The loss function, you can use it to do face recognition. This is about person re-identification. You're identifying entire bodies of people with different clothing and etc. And then you can see that if you visualize this using TSME, which is gonna put your high dimensional data in low dimensional space, in this case, two dimensional space, they're gonna cluster together. The similar people with similar clothing are gonna get clustered together after coming up with your metric, which is coming out of your triplet loss and your optimization scheme. So what we are seeing here is this portion of this image. Actually, this image is extracted out of a much larger image you can find it in the appendix of this paper. And then the image here, the one that I'm showing, is actually focusing on this part of the image. And you can see that, yes, people with, diff with similar clothing are clustering together. So once you learn your metric, you're going to be able to cool stuff like this. There is a modification to this batch hard loss example, which is actually going to give you better results. It's again in the spirit of making something that is not a smooth, smooth, especially this maximum operation here where you have this plus, you're smoothing in the same fashion, exaggerate that number, add a one to it, take the log, then you're gonna find the maximum of that number at zero. And this is basically exponential of zero, which is one. That one actually ends up being useful. So the smoother version of this bracket which is a function that is maximum of x and zero, is actually gonna end up being useful. And that's this green highlighted number. And you're using Mars validation split to do this. This is for person re-identification. So you can explore that data as well. And this is uh, about triplet loss, different versions of them, batch hard, which is this loss function here, and then other versions. And then this soft margin actually helps. Any questions about triplet loss? actually batch heart loss. Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.